Hi, what I have here on the workbench today are a couple of devices from Wearable Microwave. On the channel, I have done a couple of videos on their products. I will link these videos in the card section above and in the video description below if you haven't watched them already. Wearable Microwave is a US-based company located in New Jersey, which is only a few hours away from where I am. And their products are proudly manufactured here in the United States. They offer high-quality microwave components from splitters, couplers to hybrids and other custom-made components from DC all the way up to 26.5 gigahertz. They didn't pay me to say this, but I definitely wanted to give them a shout out as these high-quality locally manufactured products are harder to come by these days. If you are interested, you can check out their website following the link in the video description below. Among the two devices sent in, this one is a directional coupler. Its operating frequency is between 2 GHz and 18 GHz with a 10 decibel coupling. And the device underneath here, that's a wideband Wilkinson divider and power combiner, which operates between 0.5 GHz all the way up to 26 GHz. I probably won't have time in this video to test both of these, so let's concentrate on the directional coupler. And we'll look at this Wilkinson divider in the next video. As a brief refresher, a directional coupler allows RF signal to go through the main signal path with very little attenuation in either direction. If you input a signal from the input port and connect the output to a properly terminated 50 ohm load, then a portion of the signal is coupled through this coupling port, and the fraction that is coupled over is determined by the coupling factor. Since this is a 10 dB directional coupler, the signal coupled over would be 10 dB lower than the signal coming in. And if it is a 20 dB coupler, then the signal coupled would be 20 dB lower than the signal coming in. A typical use is to insert it in the main signal line and sample the signal without attenuating it too much. Another typical use is using it in the feedback loop of a leveled RF generator. This couple port is then used to measure the output RF power so the control loop can adjust accordingly. Anyway, you can see in the specifications, the coupling is very flat across the specified frequency range, hovering just about 10 dB. And the mainline loss increases ever so slightly as the frequency increases, but well under 1 dB across the entire range. And here you can see the directivity of the coupler. The directivity is defined as the power difference between the coupled port and the isolation port. This figure can only be measured during the manufacturing process, as the isolation port now is already terminated and sealed. As I mentioned before, you should never attempt to remove the factory installed 50 ohm terminator, as proper impedance matching is critical to the specified performance numbers. And the return loss figure shows the different return loss characteristics looking into different ports. To showcase the uniformity of the manufacturing process, Wurbo provided the coupling and loss figures measured from multiple samples, and you can see how tight the specs are across these different units. Now let's do a few tests with the Nano VNA. The Nano VNA I'm going to use here is a Nano VNA-FV3, which can go up to 6.3 GHz. And we'll do some higher frequency measurements in just a little bit with different equipment. And to save some time on this video, I have already calibrated the Nano VNA off camera, so we're good to go. First, let's take a look at the coupling. For this test, I have terminated the output port so that we're measuring between the input port and the coupling port. The directional coupler's frequency band starts at 2 GHz, and you can see here we're actually starting with 1 MHz on this Nano VNA. And that is deliberate, as I wanted to see how the frequency response rolls off as we go below the specified minimum frequency. And to orient ourselves, the cyan line here measures the S21, which is the coupling between the input port and the coupling port. And the yellow line here is the S11, which is the return loss looking into the input port. Hmm. If you take a look at the coupling here, you can see that we're actually only at about 5 dB. This measurement doesn't look quite right, as the specified coupling is around 10 decibels instead of the 5 we're measuring here. Now, I'm definitely going to trust the verbal directional coupler rather than this nano VNA. So let me actually change to a different VNA and uh, take another look. And here is the same measurement showing on the light VNA. The light VNA also goes up to 6.3 gigahertz. Again, I deliberately left the start frequency of the light VNA to start around zero, so we can get a sense of what kind of performance you can expect if you are using the directional coupler below its specified frequency. As you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. As you can see, the coupling measurement on the light VNA 
is almost exactly minus 10 dB, at least in the lower frequency range. Of course, towards the higher frequency range, the light VNA is no longer accurate. So the measurement on the nano VNA-FV3 was definitely quite off. I don't think I noticed that before. Anyway, if you have a nano VNA-FV3, you might want to check yours to see if the measured levels are correct. Now we're measuring the insertion loss. Let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see that over the entire frequency range, we actually have a pretty flat response. Now, of course, towards the higher range, as I mentioned before, the light VNA is no longer accurate, but you can see that essentially the S21 is flat, and that flatness even extended far below 2 GHz. Now we're measuring the isolation between the output port and the coupling port. As you can see here, the isolation is pretty good. Right now we're at uh, minus 22 decibels, with a frequency of 3 gigahertz. And this level of isolation is more or less what is specified in the datasheet. All right, now let's take a look at higher frequencies. But first, let's actually take a look at the experiment setup. Up there, what is humming currently, is my microwave sweeping generator, the HP 8620C, that is generating a CW signal at roughly 12 gigahertz. And the output power is currently measured by the WaveTac power meter, and you can see it is roughly at 0 dBm. Of course, I have used a directional coupler so that I can also measure the output frequency, as you can see that it's currently showing on the 5350B frequency counter, which is right around 12 GHz. And this is actually one of the main use of the directional coupler here. As you can see, this is used to sample the signal, as I mentioned earlier. And this directional coupler was the one Verbal Microwave sent me last time, and has an operating frequency between 0.5 GHz and 20 GHz. So now let's use this setup to measure the coupling of this directional coupler. So let me reconnect the input to input. And let's connect the coupling port to the power detector here. Maybe you take a look at the measured power. Currently it is reading minus 9.3, 9.4. So that is largely in line with what we're seeing from the spec. And here you can see we're actually measuring the mainline loss. You can see the input is to the import and output goes to the detector here. And we're seeing roughly minus 0.6. And here you can see we're measuring the isolation between the output port and the coupling port. And if you look at the numbers, we are getting roughly minus 15 decibels. And keep in mind the insertion loss, the isolation, the mainline loss we just measured here is specific to this frequency of 12 gigahertz. So this is how you would characterize the device without a VNA. Of course, it is very tedious as you have to manually adjust the output frequencies and measure each frequency point individually. Because the isolation between the output port and the coupling port is pretty good with a directional coupler, we can actually use this property to combine two signals from different sources. Of course, you could also use a Wilkinson divider as the isolation between the ports are typically greater than 20 dB. But with a directional coupler, the bonus is that there is built-in attenuation between the coupling port and the input port which could come in handy in some scenarios. To demonstrate, I'm using the directional coupler here to combine two 11 GHz signal, one from the 8620C and the other one from my WaveTac 907 microwave generator. And this signal right here coming in from the output, that's from the 8620C sweeping generator, and the other signal coming in from the coupling port is actually from the WaveTac 907. So I'll show you the setup here. You can see here, the sweeping generator is actually putting into the output port here. And here is the WaveTac 907 up there, and that signal goes into the coupling port. And here on the spectrum analyzer, we can see the two signals here. So let me zoom in. Now if I change the frequency on the 8620, you can see that signal moves around on the spectrum analyzer. So this is actually useful when testing receivers. 
When I reviewed the 0.5 GHz to 20 GHz directional coupler from Wearable Microwave last time, I also did an experiment using the directional coupler as a reflectometer for testing antennas. The starting frequency of the directional coupler we're testing today is 2 GHz, which is a little bit too high for the operating frequency range of the HP 8566B, so I'm not going to show you that here in this video. But I would recommend you checking out my other video demonstrating this use. I will leave a link in the video description below. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.